the fundamental sequential logic component is known as a flip-flop. Now this is a bistable multivibrator circuit. So the word bistable means that it's got two stable states. So obviously no bicycle with two wheels. So it's got two stable states. So essentially a zero or one. And because these states are stable, means it can store a zero or one, i.e. a single bit indefinitely. So it can stay in a stable state for as long as it's got power. So this is a bistable multivibrator circuit. Now there's actually other types of multivibrator circuits. One type is an as-stable uh, multivibrator that's got zero stable states. So an example of an as-stable multivibrator is an oscillator because if um, because it's not got any stable states, if it's in a say, state of zero it's unstable here so it'll jump to a one and it's unstable in there so it jumps back to zero so because each state is unstable, it just jumps back and forth. So we get this kind of oscillating behaviour between the two states. And the other type of multivibrator is a monostable, which has just got one stable state. So an example circuit um, of a multivibrator of a monostable multivibrator is known as a one-shot. So this has got one stable state, so it might be in state of zero, it might be stable, it can stay in state of zero for as long as it requires. And then you can put it into um, state one, where it's unstable, so it'll stay there for a short while, but because it's unstable, it drops back to the stable state. So we call this a one shot and it effectively just generates a pulse. So with a bi-stable, because it's got two stable states, you can leave it in state zero for as long as you want. And you can so you essentially store in a zero here, or you can then make it to go into state one, and it can just stay for as long as it needs in state one. It's also stable in both. So we're going to be focusing on the D-type flip-flops. It's also known as a data flip-flop or a delay flip-flop, because um, the output essentially is delayed by one clock cycle compared to the changing input. So we create a D-type flip-flop from a D-type latch. So for our um, D-latch circuit, there's two inputs. So we've got a D input and E. So D is a data input, so the value we want to um, store. And E is the enable input, and essentially acts as a gate, so we can either enable or disable this um, latch. And then we've got two outputs, Q and not Q, and these are just the complements of each other. So it means if Q is a one, not Q is obviously gonna be a zero. And if obviously Q is a zero, not Q will be one. So these two outputs are always the opposite. And you can see, you know, there's this little bubble on the output here, which signifies that that's the not Q output. So we can actually create um, a D latch from NAND gates and having this concept of feedback. So we're just going to look first at the truth table. So this, this is the truth table for D latch. So you can see that when it's disabled, so when the E input is zero, does it matter what um, D is? It can either be a zero or one, but there's no change, so NC means no change. So as long as it's this, uh, the E enable bit is zero, there's no change in the output. So they set to the, the latch is locked. So it's only when we enable the latch, we enable it by making the E uh, input equal to one and then whatever you put on D so here we put D zero Q will then become zero so essentially Q just equals D and not Q is obviously just the opposite or the inverse of this so when it's in again when it's enabled if you put a one on the D input that will um, go on to Q so essentially, so now we say that the latch is transparent. So whatever you put on D, so we've got, so when E is equal to one, so say it's transparent because whatever you put on D just gets passed. It's like this, the latch is just transparent. 
and whatever it goes on to D will just come out of the output Q. And again in this situation not Q is obviously just the opposite or the inverse of this. So we'll look at an example now but because we've got this feedback here so you can see for this uh, this NAND gate here for example that feeds back into here and again this output feeds here so we need to know what is on the output before we can work out what's going to happen so we're just going to assume at the beginning that this um, flip flap is in this kind of set position so Q is equal to 1 and obviously not Q is equal to 0 so we know that Q um, at the next time step so T plus 1 is just equal to the sum uh, for the previous time step so Q of T when it's disabled so we'll prove that now so here we know there's we're assuming they're in this this state so the one is going to end up on this gate obviously the zero will go to there as well and then now we'll look what happens when we put it. so we're essentially going to disable this latch and we're going to put as a d we're going to put zero on the d here so we know with an and gate from the nand gate truth table any time we've got a zero on one of, on an input the output will be a one so we're going to end up with a one here on the output of this gate and a one here as well because both inputs are zero so then um, and this so now we're going to end up with a one and a one here so we know from the NAND truth table we're going to get a zero on the output and for this situation here one and a zero on the inputs will give us a one on the output so you can see when it's disabled so when e is zero this is disabled and the fact that we've put a zero on the d input hasn't changed the output the output has remained a one so this so in this situation when e is zero the latch is locked Now we'll see what happens when we enable the latch. So we're going to make E equal to 1. And then we'll see how um, the output Q, T at the next time step will just be equal to the value of D. So again, we're going to assume that it's in this kind of set position. So the output is currently a 1. So that obviously feeds back here. So not Q will be a 0. That's going to feed back here. So again, from the NAND um, truth table, sorry, um, when we enable it then, we've made the E input a 1, and we're going to put a 0 onto the D input. So we know when you have, any an, on a NAND gate, when you've got a 0 on the input, the output is going to be a 1 from the NAND function. So that, this 1, We'll then feed back into here. And we'll have a 1 and a 1 on this NAND gate, what gives us a 0 on this output here. So then a 1 and a 0 on here, on the inputs for this gate, will give us a 1 on the output. So any time we've got a 0, we're going to have a 1 on the NAND gate output. So that 1 will feed back into here. And then we're going to have a 1 and a 1 on these inputs on the NAND gate which will give us a zero here. So you can see when the uh, latch is enabled or it's in transparent mode, whatever you put on D works its way to the output. So that's how you build a D latch from NAND gates. So you have these two, these are uh, cross coupled NAND gates and we can combine the D latch then into a D type flip flop. So it's built, it's um, constructed from two uh, D latches in what we call a master slave configuration. So here we've got two latches connected together. So the first one is known as a master, and the second one is known as a slave. So the clock comes in, goes into the enable. But notice here for the master, there is a not gate there. So when the clock is low, the master flip-flap is trans 
transparent because the clock is a zero essentially so it's low it's a zero that not gate will turn the signal to a one which goes into enable bit so it's going to en enable the master flip-flop and it'll disable or lock the slave flip-flop so whatever's on the value d is going to be stored in the master flip-flop but it cannot propagate to the put q because the slave is locked now when the clock then goes high so the clock's been low up to this point now when the clock goes high the master then is going to lock because the not gate will turn this this one here into a zero the slave will unlock and become transparent so whatever value is then stored is currently in the master is going to get passed onto the output queue so because that happens when the clock goes high this is an example of a positive edge triggered so for the negative edge the not gate will just be here instead of here so we'll just look in the this first situation so as I say when the clock is a zero so we've got a zero here so that's when the clock is um is low that's obviously going to put a one here and we're still going to have this zero here so now if you imagine you put a one on d that one because this master is unlocked that one will then load into here and essentially it'll store a one in here so the one will be on the output of the master flip-flop but because this because the slave is currently locked or disabled because there's a zero on the enable bit nothing will happen this one just kind of stays here and it's only when the clock changes so the clocks will get this positive edge and the clock goes to a one so this clock now is a one the clock is a one so that's going to get inverted because of that not get so have a one here so this is now locked so this flip-flop is essentially switched off so it doesn't matter and if you can put a new value on d but nothing will happen because the master is essentially disabled and because this is enabled now this one can then move into this flip-flop and come out on the output queue so we put a one on the input and when this positive edge comes in it can mo it can move through the flip-flop and appear on the output so this is a um, symbol of a flip-flop so we've got the um, similar to lights but instead of the enable pin here now we've got our clock input so we can see this triangle here so this is where we put the clock input so this is for a positive edge if there's a little bubble here that'll be a negative edge triggered uh, flip-flop so this is for a positive so our clock goes in here we can see the truth table here so when, we, when we've got the when there's a negative edge on the clock it doesn't matter what if d is zero or one it doesn't matter the output but time t so it's going to stay the same as the previous time step so q won't change when there's a negative edge so it's only when we get a positive edge that whatever value we put on d will just appear on q so we put a zero you'll get a zero on the output we put a one on um d you just get a one on the output so it's only when we've got this positive edge in here that whatever value is on D will essentially be clocked onto the 8-put queue.